multiple parents come into me the parents are in actually in on the idea that let's reduce it by five years L let's make it 10 years old because i i anticipate it's going to take what five six seven years for him to actually mount it's it's it's, it's there and um with the mri and everything i i think people st will still try to go around it so like you're saying we need to go to the grassroots i've seen manchester united under eight i've seen yeah, under yeah, eight yeah. So when you see videos of lionel messi at eight years old uh liverpool recently signed this ramsey guy yeah, or something. yeah. i just saw videos of him at 11. You, it's 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 and there's no doubt about the age but that it's it's a big problem here because gary we'll, we'll have to overhaul the mentality of a whole lot of Ghanaians, mothers fathers to actually come on board and know that a cheating is not the solution england for a long time refused to participate in under 17 yeah. world cup because of this particular problem yeah. they, they felt i mean the south americans and the africans were <laughs> were rigging the system yeah, so yeah, there so was no point sense. yeah so until very recently uh, the sort of I mean, measures some measures have been put in place i don't think they trust the system completely i don't i don't think uh, most of these teams actually play to win like no 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 they, no, no, they celebrate they are, they are actually looking to use it for what is meant for a developmental platform yeah, yeah occasionally here and there you might meet one or two uh, generations of players who are talented enough to probably go and win you the L cup. But like like this recent one that have that has grown into what yeah. is now the under twenty and under twenty three. Yes, exactly. Very talented. You, you might come a, 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 along some some team like that, but if we make it a purpose that we have to win under seventeen every two years or every four years or whatever it is, it's going to encourage ways and means possible. We don't we don't need to call players three months to a tournament come and play justifier nothing has gone into their development yeah. like it's 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 we are we are we are just you see matching. you see but we can sit on joy fm and this is for all of us sit you on the line and then um, kofi mm. bewa and eustace in the studio as well we can sit on enjoy on joy fm and say that yeah three months charlie we are going to why are we calling players three months to the time and but look i mean this is ghana you know what the inflation rate is <laughs> You know, you know what the inflation Gary, rate is. Without look, investment, yeah, investment. No, I, I'm just saying. Look, the, the 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 honest truth is that yes, I I hear all you are saying, and let me play devil's advocate here. Mm. If I am at the FA, bro, look, the system is such that I I I literally and honestly cannot take money if I'm the FA and camp. There, I don't have the money to camp teams for six months the required six months see gary if if, if i may say something yeah oh you, no right? no that's why you're here um the patriotism of Ghanaians has gone down the what patriotism yeah. like okay, we, yeah, we, okay. we're not patriotic anymore yeah. if you're working at the fa yeah the job is part-time it's a service to the nation yeah right all these per diems all these uh exact i mean meetings that they have and they get bonuses all these ex gratia they also get ex gratia they do if you loved Ghana football, if you loved football, and one person made a commitment and said, you know what, do yeah. calculate all these monies, but let I would give mine towards youth development. And I'm encouraging all my other members for the next four years for us to put money. Because you see, take it for example, Kotoko. When Kotoko goes for sponsorship, or even the nation, when we go for sponsorship, yeah. it's for black stars. Yeah. We all understand that. <coughs> so you have to be able to devise a way to be able to get money for the junior teams right and you see football is a developmental tool according to the un it it's is one of the stgs sports yeah. Yeah. so if we devise strategies around the stgs there's funding that the fa can assess for example if you say you're training a thousand female coaches that is getting a thousand females um i mean ladies of the street yeah Given employment, we are, you're helping the girl child, say 15 to 19 year olds, training. There's funding for that. You'll be able to run these programs. But you see, we need people who are resourceful. We need people who are able to. I mean, Ghana, Ghana uh, Black Stars became attractive in 2006. Yeah. When, uh, was it EPN, the company that came in was able to start paying 10,000 per match. Yeah. Now everybody yeah. wanted to play Black Stars, were able to qualify. We need somebody at the junior level who's resourceful enough to be able to go to say my brother Ibrahim Ajata Semen and say, listen, just like you are your mantra is building for generations, we at the FA want to build a team for generations. So we want Jata Semen to be able to take care of us. 
and sponsor us. If they buy into it, this is a company that is growing. And it will grow with these kids. And they will be able to say that, listen, when Jata Cement started, we ended up sponsoring under 15 teams. And these are the players that have grown with our support. Yeah. So where I'm coming from is that, Gary, the funding has to be out of the box. You need to find a way to generate money to run these programs. You will not get the funding the normal way. Not the normal way. Yeah. And there's normal people who are sitting there. That is why it's difficult for them to get the funding. Charlie, our top is blowing up a bit. Let me let me let me just go there for a second and get a few things. Um, Sicho, thank you again. I mean, I'm sure you you wanted to sleep on your trip and we've got you on the line, but thank you for staying with us. We are keeping you company so that you don't sleep while you you guys drive. Yeah. <laughs> um, good afternoon, Gary. Great discussion. Picking these young guys from school is a great idea, but how do we manage them to be more efficient both on the field and in the classrooms? Um, this is from Ajiman Joseph Community 9 in Tema, a.k.a. Ajingo the Man. Okay. Um, okay. Ni Noti Dwa, the host of Ultimate Health here, who will be in this chair by this time tomorrow, hosting his program, is listening to us. He says, Age doping is broader than developmental stage challenges. It corrupts the entire system and game. It is counter to the value system that underpins sports and sportsmanship. Right. And that is the point that Eustace sought to make as well. Jonas from Lashibi says, Gary, hammer on our pitch status. My area backyard pitch is far better. Even on TV, you could still... <laughs> see Gallis on the pitch <laughs> he says um this one is from you you didn't give his name uh you didn't give your name please give us your name he says you vividly remember nigeria's under 17 squad with the likes of chris santos macaulay olufade akin sola and co that won the 2007 fifa world cup in korea how come FIFA's MRI machine couldn't detect the real ages of those Nigerian players? If I'm not mistaken, in 2007, there was no MRI no, 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 no. at the time. No, no, yes, no, this, yeah. this, they are um, playing predated MRI or postdated MRI predated that of them, um, whatever. Hello, Gary. Good afternoon. I'm enjoying the show. 100% conversation. William from Shukura. Oh, give us your input. We, <laughs> we know you're enjoying the show, but what do you think about what's being said? Uh, this one is from someone in the USA who is interested in tomorrow's FA Cup final. Mm. Says, I wish Heart of all good luck tomorrow. Um, someone from the USA sends this one in as well. 055-1111997. We lost uh, Sicho on the line, but Yusis and um, Kofi Bewa are here. So, Kofi just gave us the, the, the formula for what he would do if he finds an under-17 player. Just to mitigate the effects of age cheating but he was swiftly put in his place by eustace who says that <laughs> even before he eustace would have seen their birth certificate mm -hmm. or whatever it is likely that a parent could have changed from a certain school to your school yeah. and ha would have changed the age over there of course so what do you do then you should understand that you see sport is a reflection on society and pamum <laughs> <laughs> our, our people are such that they will do anything for anything to work exactly yeah. and you see um it's sad like um note my brother note said yeah he's still typing actually right. but as, as people in football we work with ethics there's no reason why i'm gonna i'm gonna bring a boy older than you know i mean 16 years or so and put him in an under 15 game it's yeah. against the ethics of the game yeah. but we are a reflection on society whereby we realize that people just have thrown everything to the wind so you have to do your checks and counter checks and checks and counter checks otherwise you will get disgraced yeah okay you know? so assuming you find a child that is properly 17 i mean pay all your checks yes what is the next thing or oh, properly 15, 15 and you, yes. you want to put him in your under 17 tournament which you usually host right what is the next thing you do as a process for people well like know? i said he would have to come for trials okay for us to have a look at him mm -hmm. because um like we say we you're building a young man into you know a footballer and you want to see all his attributes you want to see his attitude whether he reports to training on time and stuff if he goes through all that then you have to assess them as we we speak in our i mean for me 
I'll have a partnership with Evo FC in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So when I see a, a young chap who is within the school going area, because it's difficult to combine school and, and football here, I send them to South Africa. Oh, mm -hmm. right. So that they go and then they, com they combine uh, the two. And then by the time when they're 17, we'll be able to decide. And the exposure, we've realized that it gives them um, exposure to modern techniques, yeah. to good pitches, to good medical care and then it prepares them for the next level which is mainly Europe so you found this player um, in your case you have a partnership okay right. I'll come to the fact that not not all Our academies partners. or people have these partnerships but okay. assuming you how do you deal with parents you found a 15 year old he's good yeah. he, he takes all your boxes you want him to go into the next stage He's in. He's a fifteen-year-old. In fifteen years is what? Well, GS is what? GS is three. GS is three. GHS three. GHS three. GHS now. GHS three. How do you do with say a parent? Well, you need parental consent. Yeah. From the parent, you need to go speak to them, outline your plans for the child, mm -hmm. and then seek their consent. Mm -hmm. And you just don't need it verbally. You need it on paper. Okay. Right. That they've given the consent for you to develop the child, and that, apart, I mean, even though they've given the consent, you still consult them as you move along as to the next step. So that's what you do next. Once you get the consent, then, you know, you might try to get them into, you know, um, on the academies outside or like if you don't have a partnership, obviously that is going to play for you here locally yeah. and you're going to try and get him in, you know. So basically that's what happens. Now, again, another scenario. We get lots of comments about, look, you get about 10 or 15 people saying that Charlie Gary, um, you guys are the ones who you know do the talking on radio. Look, there's a boy in in a sing a sing somewhere. Yeah. This boy, he's very good. He should be in the national team. And what's the process? How does a national team coach find that talent and then bring him into there? So you are talking about we are in Accra. Yeah. How do you translate that same process to Sifiyo or something? Right. If you if you are national team, the FA yeah. has regional FAs. Okay. Right. Okay. They have regional coaches. Sure. These coaches are the ones that if somebody like you, Gary, is giving this information, he is the go to person to say that listen, I've been told that there's a young chap in Sishiri also. He's in your region. You need to go look Go at find him. him. Right. But in Ghana, you realize that you might call the developmental coach and he will tell you that he doesn't have fuel. He doesn't have fuel. He hasn't been paid for nine <laughs> months. So Charlie. there's no way he's going to be able to. And again, Gary, it, it buttresses the point that we are not doing things right. Because these are the guys who need to be well resourced. Because they are the first point of call. Yeah. They see these talents before they report to the ones here in Accra or whatever. But they lack the expertise. I mean, they lack, they lack the finance. The they resources. lack the, the motivation and yeah. stuff. So sometimes then they, they have they have to, I mean they get bright. so that that explains the shortcuts it does because then, so the they, they wouldn't get fuel to go and look for the the boy in Yang mm -hmm. so if they are in for example they are based in Tamale mm -hmm. they will look for the easiest option in Tamale who would then you know sort of <laughs> pay something yeah. of course that's what I'm saying rather that. than travel to three hours exactly. on the bad road exactly to go and look for that talent exactly. probably sleep in the hotel mm -hmm. wait for the boy the following day you know get this consent and and the sad thing about it gary is yeah. that because like we said in every house in ghana there's a footballer yeah or in every area there's a footballer and a really good one sometimes the boy who was closer yeah even though he wasn't as good as the one who was in nakbanduri yeah when he, given the opportunity will come and perform yes and then we forget that there was talent in Napunduri that we should have gone for. Yeah. We would have performed better than we did. And, and that has been the problem with, let us say, we say the business team has worked in a way, so it makes it difficult for you to make <laughs> an argument yeah. for the team of merit. Yeah. That people should be chosen on merit because they'll say, oh, but the last team, when they went, at least this guy got a contract, this one got a, but that's not what we are talking about. Yeah. We are talking about a holistic approach whereby you see football is an industry gary not every kid that is picked will turn out to be a footballer yeah. he might turn out to be a sports lawyer he might turn out to be a nutritionist or even a medical doctor but because he has an interest in football or he was developed using football as the vehicle he will end up being probably a doctor in the football field yeah. a lawyer in the football field and he would understand 
the dynamics of the game a lot better. So we are just developing football on the pitch, but not the industry, Gary. And that is the problem. Right. So um, I, I, I wanted to highlight this as well. You know, what's the process for somebody in, in the developmental stages to bring somebody from obscurity to at least a certain level of, of limelight? And thank you for explaining both the Accra, the Accra <laughs> approach and the village approach. Yeah. But the village approach is, is it's really difficult. And that explains why you see a lot of snide comments from Ghanaians anytime there's another 17 team. Because you'll see that they are far more competent players and they are in the you know in the corners Intellect, and crevices yeah. and they're Gary, they are yeah they yeah. are and they these guys who are speaking they're speaking to facts yeah they 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 watch them every day yeah. but nobody has gone to see them by the time we get to them they are 23 and then they'll be giving 15 year yeah. ages and i mean this year is going to be 20 years of the my league tournament yeah and i'm going to show you a con i mean like a list of players who at 2002 were 16 years old at 2009 were 16 years old <laughs> yeah at 2011 were 18 years old yeah and these players were touted as probably the next somebody right they went to world cups and they were touted as such and nothing happened now they're playing in thailand and other countries and it's because we all know the truth but we won't and one of the problems is the coaches yeah I think Citro said that, you know, we are not training enough coaches. I disagree totally. We are not training coaches with morals. Okay. Why would you take up a job knowing very well that at the end of the month, the, the Black Stars, I mean, the GFA would not be able to pay you? Yeah. And then you complain eight months down the line that you haven't been paid. We need people who will take up the job and in a month when they are not paid, they put their tools down. But they won't because these guys are also getting things from the side. From so the they'll side, sit yeah. there and then when push comes to shove, they start complaining. So it's the fabric of the people who are getting into football. I have said I come from an era where my dad and them were in football and it was made men. People who had, you know, been, you know, have had, had been, uh, uh, what do you, successful in business yeah. that came into football. Not people who came into football to be successful. To, to be successful, yeah. So when they were running programs, you could see that there was a plan to it. And yeah, I'm not and, sure. And, and remind us of who your, your father is okay? My dad. <laughs> I mean, come on, not yes, everybody. My dad, my dad, yes. Yeah, so, uh, my dad is Mr. Albeu. Uh, hey, okay. Yeah. Former yeah, yeah, Blessed memory, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he, you, we, we, you put him to rest very recently. Yes, yes. On I the mean, day Ghana played Nigeria. The day after. The day after was day when after, he, yes, he, he was after. laid to rest. The yeah. day after. And you could see the succession. I mean, the players that played for him, Kusia Pia went on to become coach of Black Stars. Yeah. You know, um, what do you call it? Yaya Kasum. You know, Chen Chen Hine, all of them went on to careers. Yeah. You know, Pukunti and stuff. And it's all because that they just didn't come out of a vacuum. Yeah. They were trained in that I way. was told only recently that Papa Ko is a successful businessman. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah he's doing yeah. He's, he's, he's doing yes. very well. Yes, yes. And he was a successful when he was a player. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he was a player. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you this, or I'll ask you this question. Yeah. What was Papa Ko's favorite foot? I don't know. Right. Papako is a right footer. He played like a left footer. And he could play, yes. And you see, <laughs> it, it's because of the intelligence yeah. of these players. If you look at a player like Alberta Fasi, yeah. I mean, the intelligence was beyond, you know, imagine, because these players had played from together from the junior levels yeah. all the way up. And they're growing together. They're growing together. So, Gary, what we're doing here is basically <clears throat> trying to push us to go back and understand that what we have done over the years hasn't worked yeah and if it hasn't worked we need to change things mm. you know the you know, not to do our sent uh, follow-up comments he says how do you ex how do you help a kid cheat mm -hmm. and expect the same damage and compromise child to comply with the rules more comments coming in on zero five five one 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 nine nine seven <laughs> philip from adentang <laughs> says the age cheating <laughs> issue can be blamed on all stakeholders <laughs> Charlie, use this. I want you to read this one because this one is this one is in your lane. <laughs> so, uh, well, he says uh, the age cheating issue. issue can be blamed on on all stakeholders. I was a head teacher in a football community here in Accra. I became an enemy of the community because I refused to sign their juvenile registration cards, which they where they had reduced their ages. Philip from Adenta. Philip, and you live to tell the tale. <laughs> they didn't finish you. 
you know, in many communities, they will accuse you of actually being an enemy of progress, you yeah. know, and they will find a way to get yeah. you out. And and the coaches are also in on it. Like I'm saying to you that, you know, when you speak to them, they'll say, oh, chairman, th this boy there, we can give him 12. Yeah. Now, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what do you mean by yeah. we can give him 12? Can you chew in Oh, chairman, wait there. <laughs> yeah, the man 12 years. Yeah, man 12. Yeah, 12, yeah, so 12 years. 12 years. Well, the guy is 18 years old. <laughs> Why would you give him 12? Which comes to another matter. Somebody raised it and I said, oh, I'm glad it's been raised here as well. Babs from Abilinkpe says, the, the physique issue. Now, my friend Godfrey Akoto is also starting football because, you know, he wants to put his money where his, uh, his mouth is. And he's always sworn that he never takes defenders and goalkeepers below a certain height. That is his personal philosophy. Okay. You know, like our Francophone-speaking countries, especially those in the Sahelian. in the yeah. Sahelian areas, they they seem to have that policy as well. So even if they are coming, I mean, you can clearly see from this boy's face that he's a kid, yeah. but he's a very tall kid. Yeah. yeah, and they are all the defenders are all very tall, the goalkeepers. Should we try to do that, or we should just leave it to the stereotypical? You know, my Nigerian brothers always like to, for some reason, say that Ghanaians are, sh are short. I, mean, I, do, I don't know why they say that, <laughs> you know. But should we change the way we, we, we select players for the national team? This is a, we are digressing a bit, but it's in the same area. If you are, Would it help us? Yes, Gary, we should. Really? We should. Yes, we should. We yeah, should. But that is height discrimination, though. We yeah. should, be, because you see, we know, I mean, generally, I mean, if you look at goalkeepers in Ghana, most of the best goalkeepers that we've had yeah. have been from the north. Yeah. Either the north or the Afantis. Yeah. I stand to be corrected. Yeah, that's about true. Right. I mean, they're, they're outliers, of course. Our midfielders, box to box type of players, they come from the BA area, mm -hmm. Eastern area. Our wingers have always been central. But you see, because we're having a modern approach to the game, yeah. if this is what we know, then we can strategically go to the north and look for defenders yeah pick our goalkeepers from the north go to the, the, the middle part and look for midfielders go central look for wingers and see whether it would work but like i said gary these things are all things that you have to put down and have a pilot work it out and see where that and that's what we don't want the checks and balances that listen we started a program a month ago or six months time where has it got into? I believe we should do that. But the other thing also is that Gary, and I'll speak to you here. Sure. So we fire here for a man. Or be bo bo re no kufi ya unu medri ani okudi. And our person will be here thinking. Okay. You know, and if you are treat, I mean, it's a minor, a ten year old. Nutrition would help. I mean, yes, genetics play a so, part. So, so, so for those who don't get it, I mean, Kofi Bewa just said in Chi that. If you are taking children from poor homes and you uh, you play football with them, when they go back home, what are they going to eat to become that tall? So yeah, nutrition becomes nutrition a thing. Nutrition becomes a problem. Yeah. But when you have kids who are eating well, yeah. are sleeping well, are getting proper medical care, then you can, and that's where the academy pro programs come in, whereby children are picked at eight, 10, and then you know fed you know, and, and then they, they, they go. But the point is, height alone should not be the judge because we have excellent cases, Kante, yeah, you know. I mean, across they, across we, the field, yeah. All of them. It's all about the training. But it is an area that we should look at. I would say nutrition rather than phys I mean, our, physique. our physique yeah. should be where we should look at because most of our players eat very bad diet yeah. and it, it doesn't help the growth process. Okay, so Eustace, now, here's a dichotomy between <laughs> Kofi Bewe's generation and Eustace's generation. <laughs> so, I don't know, Kofi, are you a baby boomer? Yes, uh, I, I, guess, I guess you would. Yeah, that. you would say so. Yes, yes. Um, no, 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 no. Kofi will be after baby boomers. I'll yeah. check what they are called. <laughs> uh, but remind me, listeners. After baby, yes. After yes, baby yes. boomers. The baby boomer is, generation is there, yes. I'll be after baby you, boomers. You'll be, you be after baby boomers. So, um, I'll check what the name of that is called. But, 
Eustace is a millennial, 100% millennial. <laughs> and you see, millennial, he didn't agree with you when you started the, <laughs> the said, go to the north <laughs> thing. And you know, they're really millennials, Charlie. Yeah. That's what the Gen Z people do. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let me they'll, start, they'll start calling you names right now. <laughs> Tribalists. Well, uh, 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 so, Eustace, you want to make your point? Gary, um, but you get the cracks of what he wanted yes, to say. Yes, I, I do. That I historically, do. like boxes. I yes. mean, we know that boxes is a coastal greater Accra thing. So, I, I do I do appreciate um, the points uh, he's making. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the merits uh, that are contained therein however if i am um, i i still believe it still falls under the umbrella of stereotyping yeah. and i i knew, I knew you were coming to and, that <laughs> and if if we go by those means that means that um, in our national teams we are probably not going to have any defender who's from the bono region southwards or something like that they are going to be talented people who talented youngsters who will be denied the opportunity per this policy mm -hmm. i remember um, a situation where luca modric uh, was scouted by us and venga said mm -hmm. the guy looks too weak too i mean he's not fit for the premier league this guy won't survive in england we all know what luca modric went ahead to do in tottenham and subsequently real madrid and etc etc we can give so many examples i mean Lionel messi was supposed to be uh, sort of uh, he had i think there was a genetic problem yes, with his growth yes, yes. and i mean if there he was, was given a bit of uh, hormones actually yes they saw him play at nine or ten i mean when he signed the, the the contract on the napkin and if these some of these uh, stereotypical policies were in place uh the game will be bereft of wonderful players like this so i think uh, from a general perspective if we if we stereotype down and say we are picking all the defenders from here because traditionally uh, mm -hmm. um, um, times change and the game has evolved it's, it's more of a science right now i look at a player like andreas christensen of yeah. uh, chelsea, chelsea. Mm -hmm. i wonder how on earth he is a center back but it's uh, i mean it's so technical these days mm -hmm. and we have all the ball playing wing backs and all, all those things are into play it, the, the, the whole game has evolved i mean to me, in my personal opinion, I think it's evolved past the point. A stereotypical approach will be a will be an obstacle. So, in, in so, so the point. Yeah, so, I wanted you to make your point and then yeah. to situate what Kofi Bewa yeah. okay. is saying yeah. properly. Um, and again, we've just had a comment from somebody who is a baby boomer. So I've just Googled <laughs> it and okay. there, are, there are four kinds of gener the four types of generations, okay. the baby boomers, the generation X, mm. the generation Y, AKA the millennials. Hello, we are here. Yeah. And then the Gen Z or the Centennials. Now, um, another baby boomer that you know very well, Kofi Bewa, mm -hmm. please remind me of your name. I, I know your nickname, Chief. I'm coming to read your comment. And then he's a regular commenter on the, on this show. He says, Ghana's best keepers, have largely come from the greater Fanti Ahanta area. Okay. Central and Western regions. Okay. One, Kwabafo. Two, Robert Mensa. Three, Joe Carr. Four, yeah. John Baker. Uh, five, John O. And this is from the legendary Osubemp. Also Osubemp, the journalist Osubemp. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Um, he's a, an encyclopedia of information and all that. So I wanted to situate what Kofi Bewa is saying properly. Okay. It's not that he's being stereotypical. Um, you know, demography plays a role in a lot of things when we come to uh -huh. the world is changing and the world has become technical because of migration people move from but there are some tenets that like if you want if you want somebody who who, who drinks beer proper 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 i mean beer is drunk all over the world yeah. but there are some areas of the world that you are likely to find a world champion from berlin exactly <laughs> <laughs> if you want somebody who is a super vodka drinker or somebody Moscow. We, we know where we are go <laughs> exactly you are going to siberia that you know so those things yes and as much as the world is changing there are some basics and it's a very dicey area that you know i know federations like to because even if you go to england they will tell you that a certain kind of player is found in a certain place True. so in the 70s and 80s the English clubs would look for goalkeepers who were hard men yeah. and they would go north to Scotland. Yeah. If they wanted, you know, players who could, they went to some part yeah. of England, to the Newcastle, Newcastle Liverpool yeah. area. Yeah. And then, of course, this same Liverpool, Newcastle area could produce 
fantastic yeah. dribblers like you know you can name them so i think that is that's the point me like as a fellow millennial like you understood what you <laughs> yeah. want yeah. what yeah. Yeah. and I, and and, and yeah. i'll say this guy it, it's not exclusive i was saying that Good. these things would should be backed by data yeah. yeah right and yeah. i was saying this so when you do the sign then you can then you can, you can get it properly can, exactly yeah because just like he mentioned the goalkeepers from those areas i can also mention goalkeeper Ayoma, you know goalkeepers i mean even uh, Abdul, uh damba, damba yeah. 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 from the north yeah. but then that is why it, it is a subject for discussion yeah, yeah where that we can discuss it and then zoom I, in. I don't want to digress but you see if you read books around there and even ck janfi's book yeah he doesn't talk about it uh, because the book was just released about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't talk about it in those terms as we want to mm. detail to, we want to drill down to yeah. the bottom. Yeah. But he gives a general sense that these, these stereotypes or these generalities were true because of very peculiar things that happened in those areas. Yes. So in certain areas, they had the propensity to play midfield football more than goalkeepers. Yeah. Or because there were taller people in that in those areas they produced better goalkeepers yeah. but in those same areas they could produce an outstanding striker yeah. and dogomoro will come from sure. you know that side sure. Sure. um was it chu mohammed chu yeah, mohammed chu mohammed chu and all yeah. those people so there were outliers if you read ck jam facebook and if you don't have it it's in the the bookshops you'll find chapters where he outlines how at the time because they did not have sophisticated scouting systems like we have or they had in the yeah. 80s and 90s then they relied on these stereotypes to mm. go to these places and yeah. say i'm going to this part of ghana to go and look for this because it was more likely you would find that kind of player mm. in that part of ghana yeah, than a clear case is a player called amusak badumashi ah oh, yes yeah. a, way before my time but of course a serious player yeah, yeah i, heard I that mean one. one of the most prolific yeah. goal scorers yeah you know when ghana played uh or was it hard to folk play the uh, uh, Santos or wherever at the Crossbow Stadium? Yeah. After the game, Pele was running, and people thought that way because he thought reporters were going to take mm. pictures of him. But he was looking for to, yeah. to take a picture yeah. with you know. So I mean, my 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 this is from my analysis of the game over the and years. I, and it will be gratifying to you to know that Amusa is do, is well. He's alive. He's kicking. There was a documentary done on him by my colleague at yes, TV3 yes, yes. last I, year. I saw him about ten years ago. Okay. Right, and we we pray we pray for him, and uh, hopefully, you know, we won't wait for him to pass away before celebrating uh, you know Ghana. yeah he's he's doing well um i've just googled him and uh, just last year a story was done on him one of my colleagues went mm -hmm. to look for him um it says that he is currently in the north he's doing well and his, uh, his family are taking good care of him so he's fine we, we yeah he's uh, we can't see him same for abu imoro ah, abu, abu imoro is in Newtown. he's ah, on the brother. streets yeah. yeah he's been in and out of the uh rehab facility um so we understand pfag I've taken him into rehab about two or three times, but anytime mm. he comes back. Mm. So now they are looking to take him out of Newtown, yeah. where they believe the, the habits that, you know, mm. the, the drugs yeah. and the drink. Yeah. And so well, they want to take him out of the area. Well, uh, Gary, I think, yeah. I think we are in agreement. I mean, once uh, uh, Kofi says that it's not exclusive. Yeah. Once it's not exclusive, and because uh, his facts are based on uh, based on statistics. And then, yeah. I mean, when, when you do you look at the balance of probability, it's more likely we will find those kind of players but once it's not exclusive it can't yeah. be. and then there's an eye out for i mean other areas as well yeah. i think i think i think we're on the same page okay so this one is saying uh this is from not he says am i confused didn't papako become badly substance entangled later no it wasn't this papako you know they're about they've been about three papakos yes, they, in they have been, yes they have been, not, 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 not this, this papako not that we are talking about i know because yeah. i remember on the whatsapp platform we were on when the papako was mentioned somebody, somebody. said the other papako had but thankfully he also went into rehab and he's better he's now well. yes God. yes he's Thank better God. now and i would like to say a big thanks to the pfag yeah for they are doing to, good work they were well they need to do better i mean gary i'm, I'm probably going to digress but I've just petitioned them on a, on a, on a case involving two players mm -hmm. who played for Inter Allies and have been banned for the match fixing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and I'm pleading with you, Gary, that I want you to read the report that came out from the committee. Yeah. And understand that, you see, these are livelihoods of young men. No, no, I, re I read the report. We, if you're we going to ban them. Isn't it Hashim uh, Hash, uh, Musa or something? 
Um, you no, know, my my young chap is uh, Richard Aqua. That uh, Richard Aqua, okay. And uh, you know, in the in the in the in the report, there's no direct evidence adduced against them. Uh, this is their livelihoods. For you to be able to ban them, you should be able to say player A did this or did that. But to tell to say that because they played in the game, which is their contractual duty, yeah. they sign a contract that if the club tells them to go play a match. They have to go. Mm -hmm. You can't say because of that you're going to ban them for two years. So we've petitioned the PFAG and petitioned the Honourable Minister, and I'm petitioning you guys <laughs> to look into the report and to swag to say that let's, I mean, let us deal with the canker, but let's not beat around the bush. You know, if there's no evidence to support an accusation, you can't charge a young man. I mean, this is his livelihood. All right. Got that. A few comments coming in just when we're about to close. It's always like this, eh? Mm. <laughs> and then you get a flood of comments. Good afternoon, Gary. This one says it's from Mac from Ashoman. I would like to know if the North African South and Asians are subjected to rigorous MRI testing to determine their correct ages. Or is a birth certificate good to go? If it's not, it wouldn't be fair on black Africans who are always racially profiled by the Western countries. Everybody is subjected to the MRI chief. And it um, sometimes when the Moroccans and things come here, they'll tell you that, you know, a couple of players have been um, caught by MRI as well. And so they couldn't come. So it's everyone. It's just that certain federations deal with it better than others. Yeah. Like yes. Ofibewa says, yeah. if I, I know that there's an under 20 tournament coming up, if I am the FU, and this is my personal opinion, my direct edict is that we are not taking anybody more than 19. Yeah. We are taking 18 and below so that, yeah. you know, there's no... Because by the time we see that player, put him in camp six months, hopefully, you know, he'll be entering 19 and somebody yeah. is going to use MRI grade one, two or three, yeah. just so that you, you make sure that yeah. you, you, you get yourself out of that um, problem. Ni from Accra says, the H issue has come about because the technical and administrative handlers have deviated from the usual norms of, for selecting players. Let's revive the academic house and intercollege sports programs to scout for the right talent. So, Ni, um, it's actually not that. So, you know, we have some of these talent competitions going on. Yeah. Well, what we are saying is that maybe the FA should just say that, look, if it's an under-17 tournament, they have no business using borderline, what's Kofi Bewa calls borderline players, yeah. so that they can be caught. It's pretty much as simple as that. Yes, we can improve the scouting, but... Um, at the moment, this is also what we are talking about. Mr. Beria is talking about the original Papa Akun, who was the midfield general of the 83 Africa Cup winning team of Asante Kotoko. Yes, that's the, who we are talking about. He was also called the soccer Bob Marley, Philip from Adenta and Accra. Yes, who, that's who we are talking about. Hi, Gary. I agree with the coaching issue that juvenile football in the last 10 years is different from today. So relying on these old grown-up coaches for success at the juvenile level is a joke. Now, this is something else that I, I... This is not true. This is not true. Yeah. Because if you say relying on these grown-up coaches is a joke, no. Some of the best under-17 coaches in the world are 70 years plus. It is Aragones. Aragones of yeah, blessed I mean, memory. Yeah. and It is because they have done it for decades. So the it's question serious. would be that Parkway Fabian is by far one of our most experienced under 17 coaches have we given him further training and refresher courses that's we, that should be we, the question we probably have but why is it only park we see well that one i don't know exactly <laughs> and that's that's the problem because you see when it's like putting together a, 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 an ensemble of wise men yeah because we're bringing up young kids we could have a whole technical unit yeah for juvenile football yeah. of which park we see is a member they are other or elder coaches who can contribute but it's because they've been excluded one person has been at the helm for x amount of years yeah. and he keeps making mistakes and mistakes and we keep picking him and our reporter friends are not putting him on their toes so nobody's asking the right questions well he was asked and you know what he said i mean he's been asked again a couple of days ago he's yeah. not the one should be asked they should be asking the fa yeah. who appointed him why is he is he still keeping his job why is the head of the, the juvenile uh, committee or the black stylist management committee. Still chairman, post, eh? Why haven't they stepped down? Okay. 
So, uh, phone lines for the last 12 minutes or so. We brought you still here to come and talk about transfers. He has talked about our 17. <laughs> National issues supersede, you know, some of these stuff. Um, on, on, yeah. on the, so, 0302 uh, For some of you, I see most of you are trying to WhatsApp, but if you want us to hear you as well, because your points will come across better, please call us. 0302 0302-216541. Developmental football under 17 and what you think should be done. One about this team that didn't qualify for the AFCON and the larger issue that we've been talking about from the schools. We have seen from Eustace that the Ghana we did right now will be Abwa. Everybody's lying, you know. Yeah, right down from the parents and everything. Everybody's lying. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Where are you calling from and what's your name? I'm calling from Kasua. My name is Ache. Talk to me, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to cite um, two players regarding to what one of your co panels said. And look at a player like Ronaldinho, Lionel Messi, even Rivado. Rivado comes from a very poor home. Ronaldinho, all those players. We didn't have a very good foundation. So if he, um, one of your panels said we should categorize and then you were talking about so many things, I was so confused that he can't add artificial to nature. And that is how God has created the world. So there shouldn't be discrimination in terms of height, blah, 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 blah. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. We did clarify that point, but yeah, thank you very much. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. 10 minutes to show time, show mm -hmm. ends. 0302216541 in studio with me, Eustace Akwe, and also Kofi Bewa. Uh, we're talking on the 17s and developmental stuff. Good afternoon. Where are you calling from and what's your name? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Eugene. And I'm calling from his home. Yes, Eugene from his home. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, I teach in the secondary school. I'm a PE master myself. And um, exactly what Mr. Bewa said. Is the way to go. That is picking players from the secondary school. You know, per the structure of our education system, the age bracket, that is the age that competes for this competition, they all fall within the, the secondary school system. By 16, we get 15, 14, and then at most 16 in the SS. I know of players who have completed SS. And after secondary school, they fortify their age and join the academy. I have some in my school who have just existed and they are in academies play. Mm. So if you concentrate only on the academies, you will still get this problem. So if you, the main issue to focus is to focus on the SS, secondary, secondary schools, and then, and then you pick the players from there, then you groom them. That is the only way by which we can, we can get uh, let me let me Let me ask it, you, let me ask you it, though. Yes. Um, you know, Eustace is also in charge of a school here and he has told yeah. us that some of the parents themselves are the ones who come and, and demand that their ages be falsified. Is that is that your experience as well? Yes, to some extent. But in the secondary school, you know, when you are coming from the uh, basic education system. BC. Okay, okay, okay. The BC, yes. everything, they have the, they, you have your ages and all those things. So they falsify the ages after the secondary school, after the SS. That is where, that is where the whole thing started. After secondary school, when they are exiting and they are playing for that, they are going into the academic system. That is where they start. Uh, for the find their age. So that is that is where the problem is. So ah, if you right. really want to overcome this, then the concentration or the bulk of the players must come from the secondary school system. That is that, that, that is my contribution, brother. Thank you, sir. Got we it. appreciate it from in Sawam. Adam, welcome to you, Eustace. Yeah. Adam Adam, where are you calling from? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Gary and friends. Yes. Uh, you are doing well. Where are you calling from please? From Sugar Copper. Okay, sir. In the Volga region. Right. Uh, I just want to press on this uh, refresher courses for the coaches. It's like polishing their brain to bring those that are learning them the leather, le the, the football. Uh -huh. You see that this guy is not good. Let's be another person. You are not trying for these coaches. If you could remember, there was a time. Coach, Sam, Coach Samadi have to be sent to Germany. After that train, he took the uh, black metros to uh, Olympics 
uh, uh, tournament. See what he has got out for, uh, from that training. So you have to encourage the coaches to go for further studies outside abroad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacob from Kaswa. Hi, Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Okay, Jacob. We lost Jacob. Eustace, you wanted to say something. Yeah, about the the the, the teacher who called from the PE master. Yeah. I, I want I want um, him to understand that parents who come and request such things understand how the system works. Okay. They met, they meticulously request that one 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 mother. Let me let me be specific. One mother, for example, <laughs> told me that when the uh, she understands that when the children get outside for the professional contract outside the clubs track way down to your your, your, your junior, junior high, high school, school and that's as low as they can go so even though the guy is into professional football yet they, they they have their roadmap and they need the age to be edited at that point yeah. so that it the, tallies as they go up because um like everybody else who wants to go into the police service admin uh, immigration whatever it is they request for the bec certificate and once the age on the bec certificate is is done it's very hard to alter it after that. Sure. So they need it done as early as possible. The child is 15, they say make it 10. <laughs> he's, he's, he's 14, they say make it 9. Charlie. That's, that's the core of the thing. So as he's, he's witnessing his, his players at the secondary school level, some of them might have even done it already. It's, it's, it's been done. <laughs> the, already. The food is cooked. Mm. Oh, yes. Evans from Takrade. You're on the Joy Sports Link. Talk to me. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Gary. Yes. Well, um, I want to say that um, the discussion has been very, very interesting. I've been monitoring from Takari, and um, I must say that the, the under-17 problem has been with us for some number of years now. Um, I'm also a teacher, as you know, and then um, um, I've been heavily involved in the sporting activities of the secondary school and then the basic schools um, here in the Western region. And I must say that, just as my colleague teacher said, the falsification of the ages starts from the basic school. And some of them, before they get to the secondary school, they have already done a new birth certificate because they are joining clubs here, in, they are joining local clubs at their various communities. Yeah. And that is why they have to cheat on the age so that they'll be able to play in the various under-17 or probably in the under-15 of that club here in the, in the community. So... Uh, mostly before they get to the under-17 national team, they are overaged or probably what your 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 pundit said, borderline ages um, players. But I also want to say that um, the coaches must be um, there must be there should be more than one under-17 national coach. I think there should be a full team of coaches that should be handling the under-17 team, so that if one person is not doing well as the head of the coaches, probably one another person can come in there and then help with the um, um, coaching of the boys. Whilst, let's say, Pakistan Fabian can go to the back staff and then help in the scouting or something. And then maybe another person will be the main coach. It's high time the GFA invests in football. They must invest in the and the development of our teams, else we will not be getting anywhere. And I can see the Nigerian national team winning the AFCON and some other prestigious tournaments ahead of Ghana later on in the next three four years because of the under 70 and 20 successes they've been having in the last few months thank, thank you, you so much. much jacob you are my final caller and um please make it snappy for me good afternoon gary ah jacob great 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 i'm happy with the um, topic for discussion today Let me I, tell you I, I know this one is in your area jacob it's my area as a <laughs> master yeah. you know what i've always said that GFA is getting it wrong for doing sports outside the education system. At the developmental stages, the sports must be done through the education system. The under 17, they should be in the schools, the basic schools. Is that okay? That's why we have inter schools competition sports. If you kill inter school sports, this is the result you get. Yeah, Pablo Fabian was at Winneba. When I was doing PE in uh, Winneba, he was there. I know him very well. So he should be able to tell GFA that you are getting it wrong. We must do the inter-school competitions. You see, that when you do the zonas, you do inter zonas, but you do inter-regionals. So those who, who qualify for the inter-regionals, it's the inter-regionals that you select the good ones to represent the nation in under-17, under-19, under-20, because that is the inter-regionals, all the regions in Ghana. Because you must first do zonas. 
then you come and play inter-district. So the good ones will be selected for the district. Then after the inter-district, you come and do the inter-regional. Then you see that the, it runs through, the structure runs through to the regional level. You come and do inter-regional. The best one from all the regions that play the football, you select them to be right. in Jacob, the your point. Jacob, your point is well. Okay. Your so point is wrong. Well. Thank I you. Thank you. Tell Thank them you. they are wrong. Let's teach them the right thing to do and force them. All right. Because we are all part of the failure. Jacob from Kaswa is our final caller. And uh, we thank you for joining us on the Joy Sports link. Your final comments. But I would say before our time is up. Now, this week, um, Andrea Ayi, the captain of the Black Stars, went to Parliament to see the, com uh, uh, the Parliamentary Select Committee on Culture and Sports, or Sports and Culture. And it was as part of their investigation or their look into the Afghan fiasco that we had. They've spoken to various stakeholders. They were supposed to speak to Andrea Ayu before the Ghana-Nigeria match, but they decided to postpone it so that it doesn't you know, affect the preparations. He went to see them. A lot of people thought it was a waste of time, mm. but Mr. Kobi um, who is the ranking member, had this to say about why they invited Andrea Ayu. When we come back, we wrap up on the show, and then there's the news at two. There was a very cordial meeting between uh, the committee and the Black, uh, Black Star captain. Um, it was actually a follow-up on the request um, by the Speaker of Parliament after I presented a, um, a statement on the floor of Parliament with regards to uh, the outcome of the Cameroon, um, uh, should I say, <laughs> the Afcon. So that we have been at it for a while now. And so we met with every stakeholder. And today happened to be his turn, so he came. Right, so... Kobe is the ranking member for the Parliamentary Select Committee on Culture and Sports, ending the Joy Sports link today. Thank you very much to Kofi Bewa, um, whose My Lake Soccer Tournament is 20 years and will be back pretty shortly, right? Yes, we'll be. will be back pretty shortly. And also, um, Eustace Akwe, we brought him here to come and talk transfers, Man United, Arsenal, and all those things. But he's ended up talking under 17 and stuff. Thank you very much for your time as well, right. Eustace. And he also introduced the headmaster discussion that gave us about six um, <laughs> PE teachers and headmasters to <laughs> call into the show to weigh in on under 17 and eight cheating. That's it for today. Nathaniel Atto will be back next week, God willing. I'm Gary Al Smith, and that's the show for now. Up next is the news at two with uh, Elton Probe. And then... Um, we have some rhythms and showbiz A to Z from 2 to 6 with Mr. George Quay.